you're you're much kinder to yourself and to others when you have a relationship with the unknown. If you, if you think you know everything uh, and have all the answers, um, then you're very unkind to people who don't have the same answers. You can see that in the political dialogue in the United States right now. Uh, a certain portion of people who think uh, they have all the answers and uh, other people are beyond the pale. Uh, so um, <clears throat> when your eyes are tired, the world is tired also. When your vision is gone, no part of the world can find you. It's time to go into the dark where the night has eyes to recognize its own. So this outer horizon of the unknown is, is now in dialogue with the inner horizon of the unknown, that deep but dazzling darkness inside you. Yeah. As I said earlier, it's deep because it's foundational, it's dazzling. What's accurate about the poetic line is it's dazzling because to begin with, it just reflects your surface personality. It's actually very difficult to drop below. And the only way you drop below that horizon is if you have a relationship with silence. And it's the only way you can further the conversation with the unknown is if you're silent and you're able to inhabit the breath, which when you think about it is the foundational way that you give and take. It's, it's actually representative of your foundational conversation in life. The way you give and the way you take, the way you take in uh, and are grateful and the way you give out. And, uh, and that whole rhythm in the body of, of, of breathing. Um, you must learn one thing. You must learn one thing. The world was made to be free in. Give up all the other worlds except the one to which you belong. Give up all the other worlds except the one to... Sometimes it takes darkness and the sweet confinement of your aloneness to find anything or anyone that does not bring you alive is too small for you. You could equally in that last line say uh, anything or anyone that does not bring you alive, you have made too small for you. Because all of us know the dynamic where our cherished loved ones are the ones who are most confining us, you know, and most make us feel small. And that's almost always because the way we're holding the conversation with them or the conditions under which we're holding the conversation with them are just imprisoning us. Yeah. Uh, and the ability to, often because of implicit promises about the way you were going to be together. Um, so uh, sweet darkness, yeah, the unknown horizon inside us. What's difficult, you know, one of the reasons we like to have that inner horizon dazzling where we can't see beneath it is that, uh, is that the soul, you know, which is that central faculty of belonging inside you is determined to belong to the world in the biggest way it can. And it doesn't give a damn about what you believe, yeah, or what goals you've set previously. It's it's subversive to our surface ambitions. You'll often see people go ban bankrupt, you know, and, and uh, uh, with an endeavor or an enterprise, and you look at what their behavior over years that led to it, you couldn't have, you couldn't have planned it better than the way they planned it to, to, to destroy something. I think we're, we're seeing it unconsciously with Trump now. Um, and Often what looks like a disaster on the surface, the soul has been unconsciously planning for years. <laughs> you know, it's, been, <laughs> it's been working to subvert something that's imprisoning you on the surface, but which you are following as a false uh, ambition and false promise and false vow. Yeah. Mm. So to see, we have to understand that this this dynamic beneath the internal horizon is both incredibly nourishing and incredibly disturbing at the same time. And the only way you can actually stay in that conversation is if you have a relationship with silence. Otherwise your strategic mind will come in right away and call it names in a way, um, belittle it, and go back to normal procedure. Yeah. 